They've gone from very good volleyball programs to elite level. Champlain Park broke through to win its first state title in 2018. Four into the net for the first time ever. Champlain Park champions in volleyball. And a year later in 2019, it was Wyzetta's turn to win it all. Long tips it down the line to Pernsteiner, and that'll do it. Wyzetta has won the state title. 16-14 in set five. After no state tournament in 2020 due to the pandemic, it's crunch time in the 2021 season. And the spot at the XL Center is on the line tonight as Wyzetta and Champlain Park battle for the Section 5-4A title. Will top seed Wyzetta with tall and ultra-talented setter Stella Swenson and lefty hitter Katie Revere leading a balanced attack stay unbeaten? Or will Champlain Park with versatile freshman star Carly Gill an efficient senior middle hitter, Claire Caswell, be able to pay off the upset. Power programs Wyzetta and Champlain Park battle for a section championship next on CCX Sports. It's an electric atmosphere here at Osseo High School for the Section 5 Class 4A Volleyball Championship. They've been on a collision course all season and now getting ready to meet number two seed Champlain Park and number one seed an undefeated Wyzetta. Hi, I'm Jay Wilcox along with Andy Gugisberg. And Andy, the players have been sitting around watching the end of a thrilling five set match in the Section 5 3A Championship. Monticello edging to Tino Grace. I think that has everybody ready to go here tonight. Yeah, everybody's pretty geeked up. The energy got up about halfway through set four in the 3A final. And uh, it's just continued to elevate in this moment. It's so loud in here. I'm a pretty loud guy normally, but I got to yell in order to hear my own thoughts in this exact moment. The fans are here. Student sections are packed. We're in for a great one tonight. Wyzetta coming in undefeated. They have had a dynamite season. They've beat most of the other top 10 teams, including this Champlain Park team. I think it's fair to say if they play their game tonight, they're certainly the favorite, but you just never know when you get to a night like this what can happen, how things can develop. Absolutely true. I think section finals, you tend to throw out records, but there's some memories here, right? There's some, Wyzetta knows that they've been the better team at least once, probably twice this season already, and they know they can play with that confidence and it should propel them to a victory. Champlain Park, never one to be underestimated. I was there for Champlain Park's first match of the season when they played Lakeville North, and Lakeville North was looking at them as a team with a couple young kids on the squad that might be able to play a little volleyball. Lakeville North got swept that night. Champlain Park took off and has been accelerating ever since. And they've been kind of pursuing YZ all year too, and I think uh, they put an awful lot of thought into it, and it, they would love nothing more than to pull the upset. And as they said this week at practice, no doubt the, the pressure is a little bit more on the Trojans. Absolutely. When you're the undefeated team, the only undefeated team in 4A left, when you're the number one wire-to-wire -wire team in the coaches' poll, all of the pressure lies squarely on you. Chamlin Park isn't used to being the underdog. It's been a few years since that's been the case. They're reveling in that right now, knowing all they got to do is get a couple kids uncomfortable, and they might be able to cause some chaos and some confusion. Let's talk key players in this one. Obviously, a lot of great players on both teams, but for Champlain Park, we're going to go with a player that's more quality over quantity, and one of their middle hitters, Claire Caswell, and she was good against Maple Grove in the semis. Claire Caswell is one of the most dynamic middle blockers in the state of Minnesota. She's so undersized, unless you've seen her play, you won't pay any attention to her. That will be very, very detrimental to you. Luckily for Wyzetta, they've seen her play. They've had their big middle stuff blocked by this undersized, super athletic middle. She is dynamic as a blocker and might be one of the most hardworking middles in the state as well. 
And for Wyzetta, they've got firepower all over the place, but they also have one of the very best defensive players in the state. Ella Vogel is about as good as it gets. Yeah, Vogel is what we call a rock. She's a kid that you know you just have to worry about touches two and three because she's either going to stick the first ball or she's going to take away enough court that whoever does have to take the first ball ain't going to have to move to get to it. She is dynamic. She's a vocal leader. She's a presence. She's everything you look for in that kid that wears the wrong color jersey. Wyzetta's had the upper hand in this rivalry in recent meetings. However, Champlain Park 3-0 against Wyzetta in section finals. Obviously, history maybe is just something fun to talk about, but still kind of an interesting thing. Absolutely interesting to think about because it wasn't always, you know, the team a few years ago when Champlain Park won the state title, that was a no-duh in the state final. But the other two outside of that one, kind of shocking if memory serves. I believe I called one of those with you and one of those with John. Champlain Park tends to play their best volleyball when they need to. We talked with John Yunker at the uh, conference game, at the, at the non-section match, and I said, are you going to hold anything back? Are you going to try and pick a few locks and see if you can get something for the section final? He said, we're going to have to play every ball we can just to make this one respectable. That might be another one of John Yunker's poker plays. We'll see what he has up his sleeve tonight. All right, we've been looking forward to this one all season, and now we've got it. A spot in the state tournament on the line. Champlain Park and Wyzetta for the Section 5-4-A title is next. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is now available on Roku and Apple TV. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including daily newscasts and full sporting events. To find the app, go to the store and search CCX and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. Now available on Roku and Apple TV. Welcome back here. Huge student sections that are very loud here for Champlain Park and Wyzetta here in this Section 5 championship. And we said both these teams advanced with sweeps in the semifinals, although they think they were a little bit different. Wyzetta kind of plowed through Spring Lake Park without too much difficulty in their semifinal. And then meanwhile, on the other side of the coin, Maple Grove started very slowly against uh, against Champlain Park in that second semifinal. You look at Wyzetta, but it, by, ultimately by the end, that third set was turned into a classic, and I really feel like that might help Champlain Park who have had to go through that a little bit. And, uh, you know, by the end of the night, it was just crazy. It was like a section final atmosphere by the end of that third set. Yeah, absolutely. I remember, like, the excitement and ecstaticness from the student section was actually warranted. Sometimes student sections feel like, hey, I'm supposed to storm the court now. But that third set was everything, and Champlain got pushed to uncomfortable, as we see the bracket here. That uncomfortable sweep might give them the advantage if things don't go their way to start here tonight. See, really no big surprises. Obviously, the 4-5 matchup in the first round could go either way. Spring Lake Park took it, but other than that, we've had, uh, according to the seeds, and again, not a surprise uh, that we're seeing these teams in the championship by any means. Starters being introduced to this crowd here this evening, and we'll take a look at them as well. Champlain Park's group on the left. Hanson, Reese, Caswell, Schmidt, Moberg, Kopp, and the libero is Stremmel. Jesuits, Moore, Gerger, Goldstein, Revere, Swenson, and the libero for Wyzetta is Ella Vogel. A couple of really good programs, coaches that are very good friends, but uh, you kind of put that aside on a night like tonight. They, they're competitive staffs as well as competitive players here. Yeah, they'll, they'll cheer for whichever one wins tonight will be cheered for by the other one at the state tournament, but it's not going to be anybody laying over waiting for that to happen as we see Scott Jackson and John Yunker there. Um, these, two, these two have known each other for a very long time. They've worked together at different points. 
uh, respect each other strongly. There's a lot of good back and forth about common opponents throughout the season. How did you attack this kid? How did you defend these players? And uh, a highly respect, a high level of respect between the two teams for sure. When we went to four classes, I think there was some thought and maybe some hope that these two wouldn't be in the same section anymore so that they both could possibly get into their into the state tournament. However, selfishly, I'm kind of glad to see that they're matched up here head to head tonight in a section final too. Not that I wouldn't wish that they'd both have the opportunity to be in the state tournament. However, uh, we're glad to see this one tonight. Yeah, you can see here, they've both spent an enormous amount of time at the state tournament. Rebels have been five, uh, or excuse me, six times seeking their seventh. Why is that a seeking their eighth? And there was a chunk of time where you just knew it was going to be one of these two. Uh, the, the 2014 to 2019, great battles back and forth between these two teams in all of those matches. Um, Trojans have been in a different section at different times. I remember covering some great matches with them in Eden Prairie, yep. uh, them in Hopkins uh, at the time. And uh, on the north side, they are definitely the two teams to be reckoned with year in and year out. And we're excited to be in this space right now and uh, crisp student sections. Talk about it every time I get to cover a match. The excitement level from a student section is something that cannot be matched anywhere else in any other sport, be it club sport, be it college sport, be it pro sport. There's something about the fact, yeah, I mean, there's a student section in college football and stuff like that, but they don't have the same classes. They aren't friends. They don't take each other to prom. It's a different feel. It's a different environment. I love the high school sports environment. Interesting to see how this one starts out. To me, Champlain Park has to have at least a decent start. They can't afford to be overwhelmed early and then have to be fighting back all night. And here we go with the start of set one as Moberg fights that one off. Swenson will come out to Jesuits and a score at four of the Trojans. Uh, Jesuits has really turned it on in the last few weeks. We did this match uh, during the regular season and she had a bit of a struggle. Her semifinal match was pretty much flawless and she starts us well here. Revere. Here's a swing now and that was offhand. Score the point for Ellie Schmidt for Champlain Park. And we are even up at one. Yeah, Schmidt smooth out of serve receive there. Does a really nice job getting high on the ball and finishing through that swing. A little bit of a different layout as far as the gym from both of these schools. I mean, this feels like the, the fans are a lot more on top of you here at Osseo than they are at either YZ or Champlain Park. And uh, there's no doubt hearing each other is going to be an issue tonight. And, and you, you kind of are eager to see if your coach, which your players kind of thrives on this pressure and which of them maybe kind of back away a little bit. Hansen running that one down and tipped over. That is going to be net violation. And the ball ended up wide, I think, anyway. So Sophia Johnson to serve here again for the Trojans. They lead it early 3-1. to one. A little bit of a scattered start. Pop coming outside to Hansen. And put away in the middle as Emma Gerger gets a swing there. Swenson giving her a nice ball, and Wyzetta such a varied attack, and starting with good pass to Swenson, and they usually have some pretty good success when they're able to get uh, into their offense like that. Johnson with a rocket there. Strummel goes down to get it. Swenson coming across to Moore, dug up by Strummel. And Hansen firing away cross court. It's the kill for Champlain Park. Hansen does a really nice job there finding the cross court inside the block here. We'll take a look. That's a tough, tough spot. Great pickup, good swing. Hansen serving her team down four to two and a good serve, but recovering. And the Trojans able to get the kill as uh, Gerger Nice job to dig that one up. It was looked like it was on the way to being an ace, but handled it flawlessly. 
Gerger hitting 1,000 here so far. Two attempts, two kills, two very different looking kills as well. Vogel to serve. Top coming middle, there's Carly Gilk, the super freshman, and Alexi as well hammers that one home. Yeah, one of two freshmen that are part of the normal rotation here for Champlin Park. Gilk is a next level athlete. She's gonna be turning heads for quite a few years. Here's Reese Axness, the other freshman who sees a ton of time as a setter for the Rebels. Outside for Moore, had it denied. Gonna come to her again. Now fans that time. Stremel looking over, Kirpak sending it down the line, but Trojans are there. And a nice block. Moore didn't get enough of that one as she tried the roll shot, trying to go over the block, but Instead, Rebels were there. Yeah, nice close here. Good positioning down for the stuff block. Reese getting that block. And there's Kirpak with the block for the Rebels. Cross court with that one. It's going to be off the curtain, and they keep it alive. And that one sprayed a little too long from Goldstein, so a good recovery by Champlain Park. I was ready to say that one was going to be out of play. Scott Jackson has a valid argument here. We're, we won't look at that part. We see the slide here. Watch this. This ball just misses wide. The argument was that curtain is above the bench of Champlain Park, which would make it out of play. Robin disagrees, and we're going to keep playing volleyball. And now Champlin Park surging into the lead as Wyzetta making a few uncharacteristic errors. There's a look at Scott Jackson, the Trojans head coach. And back to Revere, Axness fights it off as it was off the blocker. And then Kirpak spraying that one long and we're even up at six. Kirpak with a very uncharacteristic error. She doesn't miss much. She's very crafty. She's really good with her hand contact and manipulate the ball a variety of ways. Here's Swenson to serve. And that is too long and out. Well, this is the start that we said Champlain Park needed. They needed to stay clean on their side. They've been doing a great job. Up 7-6 here early in set one. Reese to serve. And that one is wide of the mark here by Goldstein. I think sometimes you, in a match like this, whether for either team, you, you sometimes are looking for that perfect shot. You want to, you know, you're so jacked up about it and you want to just really put a little icing on it. And sometimes you have to just kind of relax and make sure you're, you're uh, putting the ball on the court. Here's Moore firing away and unable to dig that one was Reese. So Wyzetta breaks the momentum a little bit of Champlain Park and they're within 8-7 as Moore will serve. Take a look at this. Uh, we had no block up. Kirpak didn't know where Moore was and Moore took full advantage. Sierra Moore serving here for the Trojans. They come middle to Caswell, but there's Vogel to dig it up. Jesuits cross court and will score it. Jesuits with another clean swing into the cross court. The block seems to be taking away line, which may be in the scout, but that cross court shot's going to score a ton of points uh, for Wyzetta. Even up at eight here in our first set as Moore will serve again. Gilt fights it off. Now Kirkpon got a good swing there, but Moore was ready. And hammered home there by Goldstein. And there is the ability and height of Swenson to save that ball. A lot of setters would not have been able to make that play. Absolutely. She goes fully vertical there. And what's even better is Goldstein knows she's got it. So she's in the air. That block had no chance. Axness will come middle for Caswell. Moore digs it. Now Katie Revere off the block. Hansen a swing. Swenson getting to it. Jesuits will chip this time. Gilk, or excuse me, Axness with the dig, but then Gilk driving it wide, and Wyzetta continues their little run here as they have kind of 
taking control back here for the moment anyway and lead it 10-8. And there's a look at John Yunker there. Axness will come out to Kerpak, denied. Revere up for the block. That's a big block right there. Fast, they wanted to go tempo to the pin here. We'll take a look. That happens, the ball's gonna die inside and great hand placement as Kerpak has one spot to take that ball and Revere takes it away. Scott Jackson says teams have been working on that quite a bit. He said the first time we played them, we had too many times where the ball was you know, glancing off our blockers. We need to make sure we're really penetrating the net. Revere will tip Dilk, get into it. Now Kerpak cross court, but there's Vogel right in position. Revere, whoa, off of the chest of Stremel. And then tipped home by Gilk. Well, Stremel took one for the team right there, kept that ball up. It really came hot and high, but stayed with it. Yeah, and if memory serves, the last time these two teams played, we had a lot of those great defensive efforts, and it's that veteran push down the line to get the much-needed point for Champlin Park, and then she goes off the tape. Bogle will send it over. Gilk on the line to get it. Now Hansen, a big swing, but dug up. Bogle for Jesuits. Stremel is right there. Axel is coming to Caswell. And gets rid of it in a hurry and delivers for Champlin Park. Caswell so smooth here in transition. Sees the opening, runs her body into space, and it's a great swing and score. And there's Vogel, not able to get that pass up. So it's an ace for Gilk, we're even at 11. With Gilk's length, she, the, the ball she serves never goes up. When it touches her hand, it's at eight feet already, so she just kind of flattens it out, and it's hard to tell when it's gonna drop. Revere went with the right hand tip, she's a lefty. Here's Kerpak, and Vogel's pass, ooh, that one was close. Here's Hansen. And that one's off the antenna. It'll be a point for Wyzetta. Wyzetta maybe got away with one there, you think, Andy? I do. I do, but it, you know, it, each ref is going to call things the way they want to call them. That might have been a lift earlier on the setter. It was let go as we see that ball off the antenna and out. Uh, let me put it this way. Jeff Krause, who is our winning the last match, that would have been called. Caswell missing the line that time, and Wyzetta well, kind of setting a trend here. It feels like we might be just kind of going back and forth all night. Trojans now up by two. Yeah, it's runs, though. It's not side-out volleyball. It's run and then a run the other way and then a run the other way. Axness will look to Hansen. Moore is there. Nice dig by Stremel. And Caswell, that's a net violation against Wyzetta anyway. So the Rebels were going to score any, uh, no matter where that ball wound up, 13 to 12. Trojans as Champlin Park will get the serve. Take a look at this, another great job forcing middle and the Wyzetta block had already kind of started to commit to a pin, so they had to dive back in, which led to that net violation. Alley Cop serving here for Champlin Park. Overpass here and Hansen puts it away. 13-13, Wyzetta not comfortable in this space. They are, they are not used to being this close halfway through a set. Champlain Park been a little bit more battle tested. We saw it in the section semifinal. Moore this time gets the ball up. Now here's Revere off the block and Kopp is there. Stremel looking back out to Hansen. Revere, this time Stremel not able to keep that one up as she sent it hard at her. John Yonker talking about positioning a little bit with Stremel there. I think he was upset with where she was on the last ball, which gave Wyzetta the easier opportunity. He's not expecting her to dig that ball, but it's the one before it. That's the same set, and I think we're just going to let that play all day today. Unable to handle that serve, so Wyzetta now back up by two as Katie Revere to the service line here for the Trojans. Off the net, and then nice job by Gerger. Very controlled, but got up quick. Wipes that one home. 
first three-point lead we've had in a while. Yep, really, really good job by the middle there, controlling her net. Cop, a long run for that one, and then it's sprayed too long by Ellie Schmidt. Now YZ on a little run, John Yonker will use the timeout. Four point advantage here for the Trojans. They went pretty deep into the season without even losing a set. Now down the stretch, some of the better teams, Champlain Park, Eden Prairie, you know, took, took one set off them at least. So it showed that they're maybe not invincible, but I think that might have been good for them a little bit too to, to know you're not gonna have a cakewalk all the way through the season. Right, adversity and being able to respond to it during the regular season is a very important thing. I did some recon with a with a friend of mine, a guy named Jeff Groves, who knows more about the volleyball history in this state than anybody else I've ever talked to, mentioned that the last time a big class team has gone undefeated was 2009, Shakopee Sabres went undefeated start to finish. They had a, a girl on their team named Ashley Whitman who is a two-time uh, Gatorade Minnesota Volleyball Player of the Year. And uh, since then, there's been such parity in the state that going undefeated was just not something anybody really thought of. Uh, this Wyzetta team, on the length of history right now, they're doing some really good things. They're playing clean. Uh, they're playing fast now, and that caused the timeout. Champlain Park was playing catch up for the last four points. We'll see what happens out of this timeout. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if before this year, if you asked both of these coaches about being undefeated, they would say, then I haven't scheduled hard enough. <laughs> we right. did end up that way. <laughs> Great Absolutely. block there for the Trojans as their run continues. Gerger. Yeah, that's a hang here. I don't know that I want to run that that high into that block. Unless she's setting up a reverse here, that might have been, I, I would have gone with a different choice. We'll see though. Cop definitely capable of running the full offense. We'll see where she goes. Outside to Schmidt, off hands and good for the Rebels. They really needed that one here. Down by four as Stremel will head to the service line. Champlain Park had quite a few service errors in the regular season meeting. Now here's an ace, and that's something they knew they needed to clean up in this one. They still need to be serve very aggressive, but they, you know, you can't afford to give away points, and this time it's an ace. Yeah, that's a really nice ace there, and you're absolutely right. They are too many weapons on Wyzetta for you to serve easy and let Swenson run the entire offense. Cop looking to Hanson. That one's off the block, and the Rebels have a little run going of their own. They're back to within two. Swenson in the front row. We haven't seen her get offensive yet. This might be the time. Maybe not out of serve receive, but in transition. Look for her to throw her swing. Stremel will come to Hanson. That time denied. Big block there from Swenson and Gerger as uh, the wall closes. Just great press. Look at how far across, especially Gerger gets there. Strong shoulders, fast across, very hard to hit around. And they've got, the thing with Wyzetta, they've got multiple people who are legitimately good blockers too, whereas a lot of teams you say, okay, well, these two, these three are probably pretty good at it. The rest, just not big enough or whatever, but Wyzetta's got a, a pretty good mixture of that. Yeah, they have a they have they have a six five kid that was on JV. That's how big Wyzetta is. Hanson to serve her team trailing it by two, and sneaking it through there was Gerger as the lock didn't quite close. Three point lead Wyzetta. Yeah, big big fast run here as Gerger comes around, hits more of a push there, and then cuts it back. That's a smart swing from the senior middle. Top coming to Gilk. And a swing the other way for Goldstein as Wyzetta playing at a great pace there. Before the Rebels could really readjust, the ball was hitting the court. Yeah, we catch a middle, we, we catch Gilk kind of moving to a spot there. That's the second time I've seen that same positioning where the left side blocker is going to a pin when there's no hitter out there. They gotta know where the hitter is in front of them and step in front of what can score. Top 
to Gilk here, and Revere maybe have played the ball that shouldn't have been, although it's not a lot behind her necessarily either. And kind of last minute uh, attempt here. Yeah, Might caught, have been. Herself, caught herself out of position a little bit there, diving inside, and then it went off the block, kind of leaning. Axner is too strong with that serve. There have been a couple both ways that I thought were going to be out, and they weren't. You know, but this time, it was for a little moment, the gym got a little bit quieter, and why is that it could all hear each other? So 22 18 Trojans with Swenson serving. Axness giving it to Kerpok off the block. Vogel will come to Moore, and she delivers. Wyzetta trying to close strong here, keep their foot on the gas. John Yonker will use the timeout here for the Rebels, his team down by five. Yeah, 23-18, Wyzetta up here. We'll take a look at the end of this rally. Vogel just going to put up a really good five-by-five five ball, and it goes through the block there and down. Wyzetta hasn't taken their foot off the gas yet. Everything has been with pace, with intensity, unless it's an off-speed shot that they know can score there. Scott Jackson has to be, even though the look on his face might not be, Scott Jackson has to be happy with how his team is playing right now. Impressive demeanor from the 23-year head coach. Uh, he's done some great things at YZ. Uh, in As long as I've been following the game, he's had one year that I can remember where he hasn't been in at least the section semifinals always brings his teams ready to play and over the last few years has kind of readjusted what's important to him the relationships every time I talk to him he talks about the relationships with these great kids and uh, those relationships paying off right now Swenson with the serve there Axness coming to Gill and they won't be able to dig that one up DC Brown the Maple Grove assistant good hands in the audience there and hauled it in Axness to Gilk. We're going to say that for the next few years. That's a big swing into the seam and into the crowd. Went to middle to Moore, and she puts it away. Legitimate weapons all around for Wyzetta, and you hard to decide where it's going to go to. Swenson says, ah, I can take my pick here. 24-19, mm -hmm. Sierra Moore to serve for Wyzetta as they try and Put set number one in the books. And it's an ace as Gilk not able to come up with that one. And the Trojans will pull out a 25 to 19 win. The Rebels back and forth with them for quite a while, Andy, but then Wyzetta kind of just staying solid all the way through and able to pull out that first set. Yeah, absolutely. It wasn't a side-out battle. It was run after run after run after run. Uh, and then at 13-13, Wyzetta found another gear, went on that four-point run, quick side-out, quick side-out back, and Wyzetta never looked back from that moment forward. So the Trojans winning that opening set 25-19 as you get a look at the ace that ended that first set for Wyzetta. Their bench loving that. Wyzetta's up one. We'll be back with set two here from Osseo. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button and from there, choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Jam-packed student sections for both teams here. It's Wyzetta leading Champlain Park now one set to none after a 25-19 win uh, October 11th. At Wyzetta, CCX was on hand as these teams battled it out, knowing that they very well could be meeting again just a few weeks later, as we talked about in the pregame. And, and that night, it was Wyzetta winning it 3-1. to one. They won the first set. Champlain Park came back to get the second. The Rebels are hoping for that same scenario here tonight, although they then they want to, the next two to not go the way they did that night, obviously, here. So set two they want to go. Like... 
last time. Got yes, it. They yes, would, they would be fine with that. They would, uh, they would take it. As, as would the average volleyball fan. Now, you ask the student sections, yes, the parents, they might want a 3-0 sweep or a 3-1 win the other way. But Here we go in the second. Revere and Stremmel able to dig that one up. Hansen off the block, scores it for Champlain Park as they strike first here in our second set. Take a look here. That ball off the block, and Gerger gets a touch, just enough to throw it off for Jesuits. And that one denied as Wyzetta went quick, and Caswell was ready. She's real, real good. That's a great block. She's so small, but she gets elbows across. That's impressive. Top a misfire there will give Wyzetta its first point of set two here. Katie Revere to serve for the Trojans. Dremel will send a free ball over. Swenson attacking there. And then puts away that overpass, so Wyzetta Quickly evening things up. Strong net play again by the Trojans as we've seen all season. Top will come to Schmidt and that one is too long. They seem to be attacking Moberg a little bit with the serve here. This time at Hansen. And that one is too long, it looks like. John Yonker. One of the line judges is signaling good. And it is going to be Champlin Park's point. Yeah, there was a touch on the ball. There were really kind of two questions on this. Whether, it, oh yeah, definitely hit fingers and it probably was out, but it, it hit the blocker. Looking for the touch call, but in theory, that wasn't quite what we needed to see. We might break that down a little later. Swenson saving that one for Gerger. Wyzetta, well, it can cover up some mistakes. That wasn't a great pass into the net, but Swenson able to stay with it. She's so athletic, she's able to go up into the plane and get that ball, really nice job. Johnson serving here for the Trojans, leading it four to three. Top. And that's put away by Lily Reese, the sophomore, who had a pretty good night against Maple Grove in that semifinal match. Now we take a look at Reese. She's a middle by position, but takes this swing on the outside and puts it in front of Vogel. Really nice spot. Marley Hansen serving here for the Rebels, and it's a rocket. Swenson will come out to Moore. Here's Gilk. Johnson's pass. Swenson thought it was going to come off the net and was positioning herself for that, and it didn't happen. So 5 4 Rebels. And that time into the tape by Hansen. So we're even up at five. Vogel to serve here for Wyzetta. Top will give it to Gilk and she delivers. Gilk just went through a triple block. That's a big swing from the freshman. Take a look here. They know it's coming. Six hands up, all of them over, but there's a seam in the middle and Gilk finds it. Axna serving here for Champlain Park, leading it 6-5 here in our second set. Swenson coming to the outside and put away by Goldstein. Even though it hit the tape, they still didn't quite have time to recover. Yeah, take a look at Goldstein on the slide. She's so smooth, that ball off the touch of the block and 
in front of two diving defenders. Swenson serving here, short floater. Wow. Hanson with an overpass and back row block call yeah. as Axness went up into the plane to get it and uh, block got it at the same time. Trojans by one. And that'll be an ace as they look to pick on Gilk a little bit here. I've always been impressed in the years that I've been following this game, Scott Jackson's ability to find a serving target. Looks like it's going to be Gilk here for a little bit longer. Hansen. Hansen. Yeah, that time went <laughs> after it. Here's Kirpak delivering for the Rebels. Take a look here. Good high outside set. And then funnel the block. And that one misfires from Reese, was trying to hit that corner instead missed and so more will serve for Wyzetta and again Rebels can't afford I mean you, you can't ask for a perfect match because that's not going to happen but they can't make the little mistakes against this team Axness coming to guilt and that one ooh, just out I was ready to say it might have been good mm -hmm. Gilk won't turn, won't become afraid of this though. That's what I've noticed in the three or four times I've watched her play this high school season. She always wants the ball down the stretch. Middle for Caswell, chipping, but Revere is there. Now Jesuits, an opportunity. That one's denied by Caswell. Revere misfired for the corner. Might have overthought that one a little bit. Yeah. Saw the opening down the line and decided she'd push it way down the line. Gilk to serve, her team down by two. Logo an overpass there. And Hampson will put it away. Even among the best teams like this, it starts with, do you handle a serve? Do you get that pass? And that's why Champlin Park has to serve aggressively because given the opportunity, they can turn it into quick points. There's two in a row that they couldn't control and didn't give their setter Swenson a chance. Take a look at this one. Another overpass pushed into the open spaces. We're even up at 10 as Wyzetta making a couple of mistakes in a row here. And that served, though, too long from Gilk. And it's 11-10. Goldstein to serve here for Wyzetta. Trying to get a little run going again here as they lead it by a point. Hansen off hands there, Moore digs it. Good block, but Jesuits was ready, and then the second opportunity pays off for Gerger. And a little play, but a, a very good one there by Jesuits to be ready for that ball off the block. Yeah, just good coverage. Here we see it. And then we're able to repeat and set the same hitter twice. Swenson's so smart about when to repeat and when to reverse. Here's Hansen. That one blocked. Axness giving it to Caswell. Denied. Gerger. Getting up for the Trojans. Gerger came to play today. She is all over this net. Starts in the, starts in the middle and then dives into where she thinks Caswell's going and takes away her favorite shot. Tip here by Hansen. Outside for Revere, and that will score it. And Getting back to that previous play, and it's tough for teams when you get into these kind of situations where what you've done all year to be successful against a team like Rizetta maybe doesn't work anymore. It kind of gets in your head a little bit, I think. Yeah, absolutely. The, the little things that have been working, the ability to force middle worked all year, and now suddenly the Wyzetta block is answering the call. And uh, to the point where they're up 14-10, John Yunker calling his timeout. 
wants to really get his servicey back under control. Scott Jackson talking about how they need to make sure they're moving forward on the ball, keeping things simple. Uh, I love this. This is, this is what good teams do down the stretch. John Yonker backing away, letting his athletes talk themselves through this timeout about what needs to happen and where we need to go next. Senior leadership, some kids with a lot of varsity experience talking about, okay, this is what's going to happen. This is how we're going to attack it. Beautiful coaching at this point. We'll see how they come out of the timeout. Smiles on the faces, ready to go. Trailing by four here in set two. This is a gettable lead. They just need a side out and a little bit of a push. I'd have to say impressive that I have not seen any look of panic, any look at staring at the floor or pointing fingers or anything like that. They knew it was going to be tough, and they're, uh, they're seeming to stay calm and confident out there. Push deep there by Caswell. Had the previous one blocked. This time says I'll try something a little bit different and found an open spot. Take a look here. Hang it, push it. Yep. Whole lot of deep space in that corner. Cop to serve here. Her team trailing 14-11. Jesuits cross court, finds a seam. Trojans have done a good job of not letting Champlain Park get any kind of run together here in this second set. She's so long, she goes up as high as she can and finishes that ball Here's into the corner. Really nice spot. Revere trying to build on a four point lead. Schmidt cross court off the net. Not maybe exactly how they envision that one, but it'll work out. Yeah, sometimes it's not about how hard you hit it, but where you hit it. Here's a really good spot. Jesuit's not in a great position to make that play. Schmidt sees it, puts it on her. Off for Jesuit, adjusts her approach a little bit there. And down the line, nice placement again here by Champlin Park, Schmidt. Schmidt, really nice job here. Great reversal as well. Park a truck into that corner. Nobody near that spot. Really good location. Uh-oh. Swenson and Vogel colliding there. Now it's Hansen. Cross court and delivers. And for one of the first times you see in Wyzetta falter a little bit there as they ran into each other. And then look at that sharp cut. Four to four, beautiful. Outside for Jesuits, and she'll put it away for the Trojans. They break the little run by Champlain Park and go back up by two. Jesuits out, Sophia Johnson in. Yeah, really nice position there. Jesuits patient on a high set, sees where she wants to take the ball and finishes the play again. Hop for Schmidt, had to quickly get to that one to push it over. Now Revere will deliver for the Trojans. Revere with a lot of pace. To me, she can be the leader on this team, especially when things are starting to kick for her. There we see her out of the back row. Really nice long reach on the D ball. Nice finish. Hop. Leaving it for Reese off the block here. Swenson teeing it up there for Emma Gerger. Gerger with a really nice swing. Champlain Park wanting a net call. I don't see one here. Good high reach. That's a lot of ball. Yeah, that's all ball. Johnson a strong serve. Stremmel just gets to it. And on the line and out, no touch on that one. And Reese not able to come through. John Yonker asked for a timeout. So kind of similar to the first set in that pretty close. And then all of a sudden, Wyzetta just kind of starts to accelerate a little bit and pull away. Yeah, Scott Jackson gave up, a, his team gave up a five point run there just not more than two minutes ago. And I was expecting him to call a timeout, proving why he's the undefeated coach. And I'm just some guy that gets to talk for a bit. <laughs> 
19-14. He knows what his team needs. He knows how they're going to get out of that rotation. They do and have really put the foot on the accelerator since then. Up 19-14 here late in set two. Chamba Park needs a side out and a run. They can't play back and forth volleyball with this YZ Trojan team. They don't have the horses and they're running out of road. Both of those things really starting to back them into a corner. We'll see how they respond here. You got a feeling Hansen's gonna get set here if the opportunity presents itself. Little look from Kopp and Hansen back and forth. She'd be my go-to in this rotation. Johnson serving hard at Stremel again. They have to scramble and won't get it done. And they're, again, putting them on the defensive right away. No chance to make a play for Kopp. Hanson this time, pretty good pass, and now she'll get an opportunity. Dug up by Johnson, and back to Revere. Top goes down to get it. Now Marley Hanson, a swing. Johnson, though, digs it up. Here's Moore. Moberg does the job for Trenton Clark. Here's Hanson with a tip. And Gerger, let's see, net violation against Champlin Park anyway, so Rebels Made some good plays along that, but then ended up with a net violation, and Gerger got a good swing, and all in all, it's a seven-point lead for Wyzetta. Yeah, pretty good volleyball on Chevel Park's side there, but Wyzetta just winning the long rallies throughout the match tonight. Off the tape, Hanson stayed with it. Reese dug up by Johnson. Here's Gerger, but Stremmel was there. Moore, a nice pass there. Setter dump for Swenson. You said we might see that before long. That time comes through, and Wyzetta has it all going their way. And you see the looks on the faces of the Champlain Park kids, and I think that's the way their players are feeling right now, too. It's like, ah, whatever we do, we just can't get over the hill. That's a deflating point there. Wyzetta on the dump score, and a little bit of exhale there, a little bit of room now as a miss serve finally gets Champlin Park the opportunity to serve and go on a run of their own. Marley Hansen will serve here for Champlin Park. Swenson out to Sierra Moore. Hansen digging that. Now Gilk off the block. Swenson setting Gerger and she'll deliver again. Gerger, like you said, kind of just patrolling that middle. She's got, got a lot of room to cover, but she's owning that middle section. Yeah, stays available there as Swenson gets pulled along the net further, keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, gets paid off. Reese off the block, Johnson there to dig it up. Goldstein firing away, Cop fights it off. Now Carly Gilk. Outside to Moore, that one is blocked. They'll go again, Bogle sending it over. Top coming back to Gilk. There's Bogle going to the court for a dig, but a block by Gilk. That's one Champlain Park really needed right there. I mean, it's probably going to be too late to come back in this set, but they finally won one of these long, well-played points. Yeah, and there you see Gilk staying in to help on the quick set, allowing for a double block. One of the first ones Wyzetta has seen in the middle. Axness the serve. Nice block there on the slide. They'll come the other way now to Moore. Stremmel digs it. Nice cover. Great effort there by Axness. Swenson trying to put that one away. And Moore, did she get under that? No. Points over. Too loud in here to hear the whistle. I'm screened by about four people, a bench, a down ref, and a pole, so I'm gonna take your word for it. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't see it entirely either, but I just saw the official signal <laughs> eventually there. So Axness to serve again here for Champlain Park. 
Back for Revere with the roll shot. Nice diving dig by Axnes. Here's Moore. Hanson right there. Kirkpock had it blocked. And then it'll drop in. It's a new AD, Megan Potter from Wyzetta High School. Her first fall season on the job. So a set point chance here for Swenson. Ooh, and it's a beauty, an ace. Aces to win each of the first two sets here. And Wyzetta will prevail 25 to 17. Tough team to overcome here, Champlain Park. What do they have to do to get back in it, Andy? I tell you what, they've got to they've got to win a few more of those long rallies like we talked about. They've got to maintain the serve pass battle win. And most importantly, they've got to understand that everything isn't going to fall for a point. This is why Zeta, this is the undefeated team in Class 4A. They're going to have to expect that the big swing is going to get dug, and then they're just going to have to reset and try and do it again. Trojans up two sets to none. The third set is up next year on CCX. If I could be you, and you could be me, for just one hour If we could find a way To get inside Each other's minds Walk a mile in my shoes Walk a mile in my shoes Well before you abuse Criticize and accuse Walk a mile in my shoes Welcome back, Champlain Park down two sets, but trying to get things going here. And uh, they would love to duplicate what happened three years ago as the Rebels meeting Wyzetta in the final here at Osseo High School. And that time it was Champlain Park's powerhouse team. And they won relatively easily. Second set, obviously very close, but and they went on to win the state championship as they beat Egan in the final that year. So. Trying to see if they can get up off the deck here tonight and get a comeback and duplicate what they saw that night. But uh, looking a little tough so far, but obviously we've seen many times over the years that uh, momentum doesn't necessarily carry over from set to set in this sport. As we look at Ella Schmidt, uh, her sister, a key cog in that championship year looking to be just like her big sister was a few years ago. Uphill climb though. Here we go in the third, outside to Jesuits, and she scores it to start it out here for Wyzetta. The Trojans have just been more consistent here tonight of playing their kind of ball. They, they haven't done anything like out of the ordinary that they haven't been doing all year. Right. But just playing a pretty clean style of volleyball. That served too long though, so we're even up at one. And, and you hit the nail on the head there. They've been playing the same way they've been playing all year. Some of the defense we've seen from them is better than what we've seen anywhere else in the state, but it's what they've been doing all year, so it's almost expected. Top coming outside to Hansen, and Gerger is there. And those are the kind that Champlain Park a little tough, you know, you, you think you have things set up for one of your best hitters and uh, comes right back at her. Yeah, unfortunately, the difference there is there's one or maybe two kids that can score at will in the front row for Champlain Park. Wyzetta just keying in on the big hitters right now and taking care of it. Outside to Moore, and she hammers it home. And again, the Trojans in transition just into it like that. Mm -hmm. Quick touch, quick set. Rebels late with the block. Everything is so fast on that Trojan side. Top, a long run for this one. Hansen able to punch it over. Now Gerger getting another swing and it's a superb start here for Wyzetta. They are not looking to let Champlain Park get back in this one early on leading it four to one. Champlain Park, these seniors are going to need to have to pick it up if they want to extend their season. 
Hansen chipping there. Vogel was ready. And Gerger will come through again. Boy, and you hate to use a timeout really early, but it's starting to already feel like oh, this one might be getting away. It might be time. You're absolutely right. Again, a one-on-one -on -one block there isn't going to work as Gerger able to hit the entire court as she wants to. Cop across to Reese down the line, but missed. So a six to one lead here. Overpass, knocked off of Cop, and then sprayed too long. In comes Katherine Adler, the other freshman. Another lefty freshman here. It's exactly what Champlain Park didn't want to see was the third set starting out so slow. And there's finally they get a little break of Sophia Johnson with a service error and Rebels will try and put some thing together here with Hansen serving. Overpass here. Rolled down the line, but Johnson that time getting to it. Here's Katie Revere, and she'll score it. Revere so smooth, even out of the back row, just does such a nice job in rhythm. Swenson puts it where she needs it. And she can hit just about anywhere on the court. They're falling away, thumb down, beautiful shot. Vogel to serve. Hansen firing away, and now Swenson at the net. It's going to be a net violation against Champlain Park. Everything going against them right now. Student section trying to bring him back to life. Vogel trying to make sure that doesn't happen. She's got a wicked serve. Hop has to run this one down now. Here's Gilt coming through. Axness will serve for Champlain Park. Out of system swing, Gilt puts it through the block. Here's Revere firing away. Axness there to dig it. Carly Gilt off the block, and they recover. Yeah, great effort. Kerpak, the second to get to it. But outside and put home by Goldstein. And there again, he makes such a great effort for Champlain Park, and then two seconds later, the ball's hit in the court on your side. That slide has been lethal all season. Really nice job there from Goldstein. Swenson to serve. Axness will come out to Gilk. That pass, oh, <laughs> there's a good indicator of how it's going right now. Why is that an overpass and it crawls over? John Time Yonker going to call a timeout here and just try and salvage a little bit here. They're, the momentum is gone. The morale is starting to slip. And you'd hate to see a great team like Champlain Park in that space. Well, we showed you a couple moments ago Champlain Park defeating YZ in the section final 2018. Now in 2019, St. Michael Albertville was still in this section and they knocked off Champlain Park in the semis. So it was YZ STMA in the final and it was YZ's turn to get a sweep and they went on to win the state championship 2019. It seems like a long time ago now, Andy, but I remember a time when there was a thought that is anybody from the northern suburbs ever going to be able to beat people from the southern suburbs? It just seemed like there's no way that Egan or Shakopee or some of the, you know, yep. the, we're going to lose to the teams from up here, but that's kind of kind of changed around Absolutely. here with it's, these it's, two programs at the forefront. Absolutely, and there have been other programs that have, that have pushed, but it wasn't until Champlain Park broke that stigma back in 18 
that uh, a, a, a Northern team won the big state title. Axness coming to Gilk, and she will deliver again. And it's the only way you can get back in is one point at a time, and that's what they got to be looking at right now. Adler will serve. Uh, actually, she will not. She is being replaced by Caitlin Erickson. Another underclassman getting an opportunity here. This is an environment that you got to get used to. You can't just come out the first time and be here. I think I'm, I think I'm okay with John Yunker's move here, getting some of his young players opportunities to play in front of this crowd and this opportunity. Swenson setting for Goldstein and comes through with authority. Got that one Another between the block. They're just so fluid from everywhere. Dremel overpass there. And once again, Champlain Park. Not happy with the call. According to the up ref, that ball was in the plane and the left side blocker for Wyzetta Jesuits has an opportunity for it. Caswell coming through. Nice set there by Axness as well for Champlain Park. And the problem is they've fallen so far behind that just trading points right now isn't going to cut it. They're going to need to put together a run. Yeah, Gilk's going to need to get three or four here. And There's one. That's one. <laughs> nice cross court serve right down the line. Try for the same spot but missed at that time. Buzz starting to build. You can feel it. Why is that a feeling like this might be their section championship? 11 points. Champlain Park has to do a little bit better job with siding out here. Goldstein with the serve. Axness to Hansen off hands there. Moore punches it up from Revere. Making an effort there, but Rebels will get the point. Cop to serve now for Champlain Park, down by seven. And the service error there by Alley will give it back to Wyzetta. And Revere will wind up with an ace there for the Trojans. It's interesting. I really wouldn't have expected this. Kind of feels like almost an anticlimactic third Finish. set. It's yep, got yep. quiet in here. And too long there. Good, good talk by the Rebels as Molberg was about ready to play that. Yeah, it's, it's one of those points where, like, as a Wyzetta fan, you don't feel great cheering because of the score, but you want to be excited for your team. And Champlain Park looking to find something to get excited about. They've got a few missed serves to score some points. They need to earn one or two. Jesuits won't let that happen. Yeah, you get the feeling already the Wyzetta fans are starting to think about what are we, what are we going to do when that yeah. trophy is given out or whatever. And hard to blame them. Sophia Johnson to the service line here for the Trojans. They have rolled to a 17-8 lead after winning the first two sets. Hansen is too long with that one. In the semifinal, as John Yonker is going to call a timeout here, in the semifinal in set three when Wyzetta started pulling away from Spring Lake Park, Scott Jackson went down his bench, got everybody in. Section final is not the time to do that. You want to punch this ticket, you want to get to the X, you want to finish out what you started. Those kids had their opportunity in the section semifinal. The last thing you want to do 
is give breathing room. As, a, as an assistant coach of mine, Laura Rodifer once said when we were coaching together, she said, if you ever get yourself in a fight with a bear and you get him underwater, you just drown the bear. And the 13-year-old girls I was coaching looked at her like she was the meanest woman ever, but it's absolutely right as we see the medals and trophies underneath that uh, white layer there. Those will go to the champions and second place team after this match. Bill Kwan uh, in the big O shirt there. Uh, athletic director here at Osseo uh, will do a great job as he's always done. The consummate professional. Uh, really grateful that he's opened up his school for these opportunities. And he's a volleyball guy, of course, long time coach at Osseo before he became the AD. And there is a swing for Adler and able to put that one away. And again, we're going to see an awful lot of her probably on the court in these situations in these coming years, too. You hit, I hate to talk too much about that, though, because the seniors right now for yeah. Temple Park are going to be hurting tonight mm -hmm. if the score stays as it is. Yeah, Kirkpock, Kopp, Stremel, Kapitsky, Ellie Schmidt, Caswell, and Thorup. Like, it's a strong senior class. We talked a lot about the underclassmen. Those seniors got this team to this point without any question. And Schmidt down the line, but missed. As things continue to roll, Wyzetta's way here, leading it 19 to nine. Vogel will serve. Gilk will come back across with it. Now Vogel on target to Swenson, attacking there, but ready for it was Kopp. And then Gilk had it denied, wow. Just an energy level right now from this wise at a Trojan team, up 19 to nine, and working as hard as they were at 13-13 in set two to work one more point. And that pass too tight to the net. Cop unable to handle it. And uh, it's just like a, a train rolling downhill right now. Champlin Park, nothing they can do to stop it. 21-9 Trojans. Here's Gilk off the block. Johnson gets there. Cross court. Gilk just fighting that one off. Block, but Vogel is behind for coverage. Here's Moore. Stremel digging that one. And another point for the Trojans. Everything going wise out his way. They haven't had a bad bounce in about a set and a half. For Gilk, but dug up. Moore has to adjust and Stremel the dig as there's a collision up front a little bit for the Rebels. Middle for Goldstein and she scores again. They just seemingly can do no wrong. Another good long rally. Champlain Park with some great digs, but Goldstein's going to answer as she has all night long, all season long. Hop trying to save that one to Adler. Stremel, a great effort, and then sent over by Schmidt. More firing, and Stremel digs it. And here's Gilk scoring, and Champlain Park keeps on fighting. Axness into serve, see if she's got a couple more points in her arm as well. There's a rare miscommunication between Swenson and Goldstein. Outside to Moore, and Moore will score it. And now Izetta one point away from punching their ticket to the Excel Center.
They won the first two sets with aces. Swenson would love to do it again here. Side to kill. Pushing it down the line, and that one was in. The Rebels fight on. Kylie Strummel to the service line here for Champlin Park. Uh -oh. Here's Goldstein off the block. Vogel diving to dig that one. They'll get it over. Axness coming out to Gill. It's wide, and Wyzetta's undefeated season will continue into St. Paul in the State 4A tournament as they get the sweep here tonight over Champlain Park. Trojans a well-earned dog pile there with the sweep. The undefeated Trojans uh, punch their ticket to the XL Energy Center with a convincing win here in three sets. Set one, 25-19, set two, 25-17, although at one point it was 13-13. And from that 13-13 point in set two, it was all Trojans with no room for Champlain Park to even make a run at anything. Hats off to Champlain Park, those seniors um, did everything they needed to do over the last two, three years. Uh, went through a chaotic season last year, as did everybody. Uh, came back and battled all year here. Great job for especially those seniors, even those underclassmen did some really nice things. But the Wyzetta Trojans, holy cow, they are a juggernaut right now. We'll take a quick timeout. We'll come back with our post game here. It is Wyzetta winning the Section 5 4A championship in three over Champlain Park. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button, and from there, choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Welcome back here to Osseo, Wyzetta rolling through Champlain Park here in the Section 5 4A Volleyball Championship. The Trojans about to receive their medals now from Megan Potter, their AD.
came in undefeated. They will leave here tonight undefeated. Wyzetta Section 5 4A champions after they sweep second seed Champlain Park. We'll take a quick time out and come back and hear from the Trojans as they are headed to state to try and claim a championship. Worried about your friend, but don't know how to reach out? You could say, how are you, or get a fake tattoo. You could ask with the app if it works for you. You could chat with them in VR. It's all good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. been a pretty special season for the Wyzetta volleyball team and they come out and dominate tonight here in the section five championship a couple of their captains join us tonight and Emma Gerger how fun was this night to come out here and just continue to play as well as your team has all season like this honestly I think that was the best game of our entire season we all just like laid it all out and like we were so ready for this game and it like I think it really showed with like how well we played tonight there seemed like a lot of times where they would get a little something going, but your team always had an answer, and any runs that they had, you were able to stop them. You know, did you feel, could you feel them getting deflated a little bit when you guys just kept doing that? Yeah, I think, like, whenever we were feeling like a struggle, we just put the pressure back on them to take it off of us. So I think, like, that was one of the key things tonight where, like, we just kept putting the pressure on them, and then it worked out, so... I think your team kind of expected that you'd be in this spot. You know, was it was it a hard to wait to be ready for this, or you know, did you, to not get ahead of yourselves and be thinking about it during the middle of the season too? I think something something that we're really good at is just like living in the moment, and like it's always one game at a time, and we have to take it one game at a time. So we were ready to win this game, and like we weren't looking ahead, like oh, this section game is a given because it's not, and we worked like just as hard as we would as any in any other game. So. Last year there was no state tournament. How nice is it going to be to get back to the XL and, and see if you can win a championship? So nice. I mean, last year we missed it so much, and I'm, we're all just so happy to have it this year, and we're so excited. Good luck in that tournament. Congratulations on the win here tonight. Thank you so much. All right, and Katie Revere coming through with another big night. Your team has so many weapons, too. I mean, when you're on the other side of the net from the Trojans, they don't know where it's going to go. How, how, much, how important is that for your success? It's so important. I mean, there's so much depth on this team. In our practice environment, the girls on the other side of the net are always fighting against us because there's just so much depth within our program. So it really helps having so many offensive players. Your team saw Champlain Park uh, a couple weeks back. You know, what was even better for your team tonight as you, the way you dominated this one? I think we prepared a lot for this game. I mean, it's been on our calendar for a long time. So just getting in the gym and focusing on what we needed to focus on was really important for us. And our coach just stressed, play in the moment, do what you do. And it was really helpful. Considering the schedule you play, could you have imagined being undefeated at this point? Because not many teams do that anymore. Yeah, that was not an expectation coming into the season. At first, we were like, oh, this is a little weird being undefeated. No sets dropped at the beginning of the season. So it was really impressive having such good girls being able to accomplish that goal. Heading into state, I think it's a safe bet that you'll be the number one seed. But what will it take to win three more and be holding another trophy? I mean, kind of just like Emma said, taking a day, a day by day, it's super important. I mean, in our gym, we're focused so much. and. We can't take these moments for granted. We just have to work each game. Katie, congratulations and have fun in the state tournament. It should be a great run in there as well for the Trojans. Thank you. All right, Katie Revere, one of the captains for Wyzetta as they win over Champlain Park tonight, getting a sweep here in the Section 5 4A championship. And again, the Trojans should very likely be the number one seed for that state class 4A tournament. Hope you've enjoyed this one here tonight. For Andy Gugisberg and all of our crew, I'm Jay Wilcox. Again, it's Wyzetta sweeping Champlain Park to head to state in the 4A tournament.